Marcel has a birthday, social media roundup, and our Tanya and Sinjin fraudiness ahead on the broadcast. In the states who are abroad, no one's safe from the talk is a fraud. fraud. In the states who are abroad, no one's safe from the talk is a fraud. The following goes beyond the show and beyond the gram to bring you all the fraud that's fit to be uncovered. This is the Fraudcast. And now, here's your Fraudcaster and the woman behind Frauded by TLC on Instagram, Katrina. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back. And yes, <laughs> yes, Tanya and Sinjin, I think, are frauding us. Someone's frauding us. And it's a mystery. Someone's frauding it's a mystery. us. But we'll get to that. It's a mystery, <laughs> but we're going to break all of that down, all of the reasons why. The, the, the cactus fraud, as it were. <laughs> cactus We're uh, going to break it all down for It you. wasn't as juicy as I wanted it to be, but now I'm just perplexed, and maybe our, maybe our listeners can help us fill in the holes that we have with their timeline. Right. We can, uh, it's, it's, it'll be like um, the podcast The Murder Squad with Billy Jensen and, and Paul Holes where they talk about cold cases and at the end they open it up to like, you know, this is if you have information about this or this or this. So this is going to be our version of the murder squad. Um, God, if only if only we could have Billy Jensen and Paul Holes here. Do you know that Billy Jensen's a 90 Day Fiance fan? <laughs> so this is our murder squad episode. <laughs> Where we're going to put together our evidence that we have. We're going to put it out there to you guys out there, to our fraud consultants out in the field, and see if you could help us fill in the timelines. Yes. Because <laughs> um, I hit a dead end, damn it. <laughs> yeah. So we thought this was going to be a lot juicier than it was. Um, and, you know, well, we'll see. We'll get into it. So... This uh, podcast contains spoilers. This is a spoiler podcast. If you don't want spoilers, turn away now. <laughs> Reverse. Finish Reverse. the season. Then abort, come back. abort, abort, <laughs> abort. <laughs> so, um, so last week we had on uh, Agent C, our visa officer, and that had a really, really great reception. A lot of people found it super, super informative. So I'm very excited to announce that after meeting up with him, because he actually lives here in the area, and uh, we met for coffee the other day, and he has agreed to be a regular on the show. So we're going to do like a semi-regular, um, like, Like unit. dial a visa officer? Dial a visa officer. Like for those of you guys <laughs> who are, he's going to be our resident expert. He's going to do a semi-regular feature on the show. And then we'll do little bits. Like for those of you guys who are football fans, uh, like watch NFL Sunday or whatever, when you have, like, say you have a penalty or something and they have the commentators doing their thing and they say, well, let's go to Mike Pereira in New York. And they break down the, like, the oh, this is a penalty and this is why it was. Like that, he's going to be our version of Mike Pereira. So <laughs> we're going to call him in and be like, okay, so this is what happened on this on the show this week. You know what happened? Um, we didn't get him on for tonight, but I do have his thoughts. He put these out on Reddit, so um, I copied them. I'm going to read them to you. This is what he says that sort of follows up on what he talked about last week. So I'm going to start with Angela and Michael. Uh, Angela has a lot of opinions about why Michael's visa was denied and what she and Michael should be doing with regards to the visa. Regarding Michael's denial, I disagree with her assessment that Michael not talking about their engagement party made any difference. It was clear from the few details Michael shared with us that the visa officer suspected fraud and was zeroing in on a line of questioning to justify a revocation recommendation. That they had an engagement party wouldn't have changed the visa officer's opinion because something like that could be staged. Similarly, Angela is wrong to believe she should wait on the K-1 petition being returned to USCIS and then appealing the revocation recommendation. As I mentioned two weeks ago, the K-1 petitions are time limited, and by the time it reaches USCIS, it will most likely already have expired. At that point, there's no appeal 
and the service will just notify Angela of its expiration. Her attorney in Hazelhurst is not providing her with good counsel in my judgment. Michael, on the other hand, was correct that moving to the spousal visa was the wisest course of action that will demonstrate a commitment to the relationship and improve their chances of eventually being approved. A second K-1 will probably be sent back as well. And that's like exactly what he said when he was here last time. Mm-hmm. Um, Correct. He, he mentioned that that would be probably the worst course to go because it could just get denied again. Now, both courses will still take time, however, right? right? So both mm-hmm. of them still have about a year. So I don't know how that fits into the timeline of what TLC is trying to hopefully wrap up her story. <laughs> She's 90 day alumni also. So who knows her and Darcy are on like the 10 year plan. Right. But, um, <laughs> it but just Michael me... says, you're not getting any younger, Angela. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> how she didn't smack. I don't know him. how he keeps poking her. Like first it's the tongue. I, I can't even get to that. But he had cake at a clock. Um... <laughs> oh God. <laughs> the, the visa office or the, um, the uh, the immigration attorney that Michael talked to in Nigeria, though, he she called it a K-3 visa. And as we know from agency being on here with us, a K-3, as called such, is actually obsolete. So a spousal visa has that a different different name. Like, I can, I don't know. It was like, I see something. I don't know. I don't remember. Because it was a C for conditional because it was like you've been married yeah, less than like, two years or something. <laughs> it was conditional, so a C something. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, I think because people get confused because the K-3 and the spousal visa almost have like the same, I don't want to say requirements, but I I could see how someone would get it confused. But I don't think she was necessarily like a visa officer. I think she just knew the way well enough to counsel. So maybe that was her Mm -hmm. role. Yeah. Um, so that's what we have ahead for Michael and Angela. We'll see if they take uh, his counsel or not. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Well, she was already softening you know, up. And She's what? like, okay, I might get married. So. Yeah. yeah, and she needs to stop with the, it's it's my mom, mamas and daughters and everybody's right to see me get married in the U.S. This word right she keeps using this word. I do not think she, this word means what she thinks this word means. <laughs> it's not a right. <laughs> it's, you don't have a right to get married anywhere in the United States with a with an immigrant. Like, that's not a right that you're granted. Um, okay. So <laughs> the <laughs> other thoughts are Anna and Marcel. Um, now, this is what the visa officer says about this. And I promise you guys next time we'll actually have him saying this instead of me reading his words. The only visa-related matter to come up during their portion of the show regards whether Marcel can return to the United States. Anna was correct that a K-1 is a single-entry visa and that Marcel can't use it again should he leave. However, that doesn't necessarily mean he can't come back to the United States. In the short term, he probably would have a lot of trouble obtaining, for example, a tourist visa. This would be especially true if he told the visa officer he was planning to visit Anna. The visa officer would probably suspect immigrant intent. However, given some time, his his chances of returning increased dramatically. That he went to the United States on a K-1 and returned shows a great deal about his willingness to follow immigration law and his overall immigrant intent. He had a chance to immigrate and didn't take it. What happens with their story is anyone's guess. I personally predict he'll show up at Anna's house next episode and tell her he couldn't get on the plane, sort of how Friends ended with Ross and Rachel. Uh, I tend to agree on that. (laughs) We did not see Marcel getting on the plane. And we know that they've gotten married. And we know some other stuff. He has a birthday. We're going to talk about that um, shortly. Uh, so I suspect that he's going to show up at the house as well. Uh, For sure. For sure. Or Mm -hmm. he's going to like jump in front of the car in some dramatic, like, um, God, what did my boyfriend say? Uh, It's called a movie called the room. And the guy has this dramatic, like Lisa, no, but yeah, uh, (laughs) everybody be like the what I'd be like, just, just, 
Google it. <laughs> oh, for gosh. Okay. <laughs> um, and we have one more little sort of a bonus. This is what he, he had some comments about Juliana and the human trafficking story. So he says, I was struck at Juliana's story about her modeling days because it fits a common pattern for human trafficking. It's not uncommon in these situations for girls to be stuck in an unfamiliar place, have their salaries taken from them, and have their freedom curtailed. It wouldn't surprise me if her quote-unquote agency dangled jobs for quote-unquote special clients as a way of making extra money. I'll let you guess the special nature. We don't know for sure, but it looks like Juliana oh, gets with Michael and escaped that world before she was coerced into a very uncomfortable situation at one of those yacht parties. A situation like that would be especially dangerous because an agency like that would keep her passport when she was traveling, making it very hard for her to escape. I'm guessing a bit here, but it sounds like Michael did help her get away from something bad. The U.S. government takes human trafficking very seriously, so it's no surprise to me that Juliana got asked a lot of questions about prostitution during her interview, given the industry she was operating in. Um, so just some interesting thoughts, because she has talked, Juliana has talked about her, quote unquote, having been human trafficked, forced into modeling. These taking away your passport, that's a thing that happens in a lot of foreign countries. I remember visiting the Middle East in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, it happens there a lot. Uh, so uh, hopefully, you know, she got out before it was too bad. And hopefully Michael wasn't the bad situation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I, I mean, and the good thing is that we see that she's here. Mm -hmm. We know that they get married. So, you know, she's not in that situation anymore. But the, the thought had come to my mind that maybe he really did fall for her and mixed with a crappy situation, he was able to, I don't like to say be her hero, but kind of be that opportunity to mm -hmm. not go down the path that maybe she would have been heading to, whether she knew or not, you know, she right. could have been thinking, wow, I'm getting really good opportunities here. And it might've been more uh, deceitful than that. But, right. you know, she, she, somewhere in her story, she was able to even go to, I think, Italy. Yeah, she had, a, that was the issue, right? She had a lot of stamps in her passport because she was traveling yeah. everywhere. Well, and, and being a model, she was probably getting gigs in different countries and traveling a lot. So, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. And, and I do believe that she and Michael are, you know, they they care for one another and they love each other, you know, and she talked about on the show about her previous marriage and how it was like this church arranged thing. And he was 30, 34 and she was 17 and the church was like a cult and stuff. Yeah. So I, yeah, it sounds, um, yeah, <laughs> sounds like crazy this girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, she meets a guy like Michael who, you know, is you know, the semi good looking, you know, American rich guy and she falls for him. And I, I don't see that as being out of question, you know, out of the question, no. you know what I mean? Like it's not out of the realm of possibility that they actually did fall for each other. And, you know, maybe, maybe he also did rescue her from this situation. We don't know. We don't know. So, um, that's it. That's that's the visa officer thoughts. I, like I said, I promise you guys next time he will actually be here. <laughs> we'll get his, his commentary on it. All righty. So um, we do the social media roundup. There is uh, not a lot on social media. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of sad. Like, I mean, well, I won't say there's nothing. We know that there's shenanigans going on, but that's almost like with the older cast. Oh, God. Like the very older cast. <laughs> um, so it gets really hard to keep on top and, and see what's like relevant to, you know, I don't want to say yeah. just the season, but maybe like, I don't know, this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, there's a there's a lot. We're picking and choosing what we're sharing here. <laughs> if you want more, you f feel free to go to social media and see it for yourself. Yeah, go and just, you know, follow that hashtag 90 Day Fiance and have a field day. Um, <laughs> one of the, the, I think one of the stories that are really all over right now is Tom from, uh, is it 
Before the 90 days. Before the 90 days. I forget where he was. <laughs> <laughs> Just because Darcy's everywhere, <laughs> you don't know where her mates are. <laughs> um, but th- th- he posted a picture of him and his assumed to be new girlfriend um, on a bridge having one of those lovey-dovey moments. And uh, I think with the scenic have, back, backdrop, the scenic of background, and he's picking her up, and she's got the perfect leg lift, and she looks like Kate from Kate Plus Eight. She looks like she's going to speak to a manager. All I can see is the haircut. Um, <laughs> I think there was she's a actually of really cute. She's actually really cute. We've seen pictures of her before. Mm-hmm. She's she's you know there's been articles speculating about them before. She's she's turned up in some parties and stuff that he's at. She's very cute girl. I'm I think she's very good looking. But um, in that picture, it's it's an unfortunate angle where, um, yeah, she looks like she's going to go speak with someone's manager. Well, she probably did. That's probably how she got Tom. <laughs> He's like, I'm the manager. Okay. Um, <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully Darcy is not on social media today. We all know she is, but maybe she'd take a break. Yeah. Just to, and then I, Tom you know, made a comment in his comments about somebody said she, the person looked smaller than Darcy or something. And there's, he's like, yeah, about 30 pounds lighter or something. Oh, good Lord. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cringe. It's like Tom and there's Tom. He probably doesn't <laughs> even, sometimes you, I don't know if he's, he was pretty, he was pretty blunt in the show. I don't know mm-hmm. how much of that was actually him, but like <laughs> every time she cried and he's like, you can always be like this. <laughs> like, <seriously. laughs> Cause I can't handle this. I was almost like that. I, I like him. Um, so yeah, that that's pretty much social media. I don't know if you saw anything on social media that was noteworthy for you. No. Yeah. Nope. Um getting into so this most recent episode is is sort of a it's a what we saw in the episode versus what we know in real life. So we're going to we're going to touch on some stuff things on some stuff things. Gosh, English much, <laughs> Katrina. <laughs> we're going to touch on <laughs> we're going to touch on some things. It's Monday. So, we record on Monday, so there's a lot of blah, 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 blah going on. <laughs> so, Marcel and Anna. <laughs> we're going to talk about them. Because okay, so we see Marcel and Anna and this is a long drawn out like it feels like it's been going on for 16 weeks dramatic breakup on the couch through the phone translator <laughs> so bad and i mean it's it, the 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 closed captions were hilarious because it was cell phone click 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 ding <laughs> cell phone click 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 ding and then you broke my heart oh my god <laughs> this is their relationship you guys this is what she's crying about <laughs> What relationship? This is it. This is what they do. Um, So, okay. So what we saw then, and we saw her drive him to the airport and this tearful goodbye and all of this stuff happening in the terminal. But we know from real life that we have a marriage license from September 8th in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. So we know they got married on September 8th. And then we also recently, a uh, picture surfaced um, just the other day, I guess like two days ago. It was two days ago, yeah. Marcel had a birthday and all of Anna's family was there, like her brother. And her brother posted a picture and tagged everybody in it, including Marcel. And so it was, uh, this. they said, happy 50th birthday, Marcel, <laughs> uh, which led to the speculation, though, he's, look, he's actually 50, he's not 38. And then... Anna tried to clarify in the comments, no, you're just being a dick um, and you're being stupid or whatever. And so said something about, you know, he's 39 going on 50 or whatever. So he's allegedly just I don't, just I don't turned, even understand that, though. Whoever says just, 39 going on 50. Because he just turned 39. For real. Like that's or that's the age that they're saying he is. And I guess he acts like a 50 year old man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So we know that they're that he's here. We know that they're married. So this big dramatic scene in the airport of him going, we don't 
see him actually get on the plane. So we suspect that he, like the visa officer said, that he has, you know, there's going to be this big dramatic run back moment. And he's going to show up at her house or something. So we did see her drive away from the airport. So I don't think it's going to be him running out to her, but perhaps showing up at his, her house or something. Um, because it's true about the visa. He can't leave and come back on the same visa, and he won't be able to come back anytime soon, according to what the visa officer said. So he can't leave at all. If these other things that he gets married and we have this picture of him and it's up, that picture is posted at Crazy Eyes KM2 has it up. We will post it as well so you can see it on our social media. But um, even if, you know, if you're not one on social media or whatever, just know that we have this picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, and not to mention, he's at the tell-all. Correct. Oh, yeah. So unless TLC, <laughs> like, I don't know, kidnapped him for a couple months until they filmed the tell-all, then I, I yeah. have absolutely no... Well, it's we just... know the tell-all was filmed around Christmas, and they got married in September, so... I mean, right. <laughs> there, you know, if we didn't know this already and this, this picture hadn't turned up and we didn't, you know, their marriage certificate and all this stuff. And I also have a source on the ground in Nebraska that talks about that told me about the wedding that almost didn't happen and, yep. and some other things that if we didn't know all that, then we might believe this, what TLC is trying to sell us, which is him in the, this big breakup and he's going to go back to Turkey and, and, you know, go to his mom or whatever. But since we know these, we, we have the luxury of knowing the truth. We have to say that whatever they're trying to sell us on TV, whatever the scene is, it's not real. Do you think that they're that good of actors though? No, because that, that was super dramatic. So there has to be like some kind of feelings in there. It looked like a high school breakup. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't doubt that there was some kind of breakup there, that there was some kind of like potential threat of him going back. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I'm not saying that that didn't happen at all, but I'm just saying that he doesn't actually, whether it's TLC scripted or whether this really happened and they just got lucky (laughs) to catch it, (laughs) he doesn't actually go back to Turkey. One way or the other, we know he doesn't actually go back to Turkey because they do get married and he is here for his birthday and and he is here for the tell-all. So (laughs) whether this scene was TLC scripted or whether it actually happened in this regard, you know, I would lean towards it. There was some version of this that happened. And, you know, maybe Marcel, 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 just, you know, manned up finally. Right. <laughs> and, and we, you know, TLC got lucky with the, with the storyline on it, you know. He's come back with a boom box or a, a box of bees or something. I don't know. Oh, God. So he's holding it over his head outside her window. <laughs> That dates us. That really dates us. <laughs> that movie reference is Say Anything for those of you guys. <laughs> I wasn't sure of the name. I just know the reference. Yeah. That was like young. my, my, I was still young at that time. So like Pretty in Pink and the Say Anything and all that kind the, of stuff. So. The John Hughes. Ah, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. And the movies were romantic. <laughs> That's what I grew up on. Oh. Right. Talking okay. about love, can we speak quickly about Natalie and Mike? Because mm. that was yes. dramatic as all hell, too. Yes. And we don't know what's going on with those two. We don't. We do know. What we do know is that she was not at the tell-all. Correct. And she's not in the United States. So whether they are still together as a couple or not, we are not sure of at this point. Mm -hmm. We do not have evidence to support either conclusion at this point. What are your thoughts? I felt, I felt bad. I felt like, um, I don't know. A lot of people say, well, she was so quick to say, I love you. I want a baby. Something happened, whether or not it was his speculation on why her visa was taking so long, that probably made her doubt herself. It seemed like she kind of snapped to reality with uh, how could someone actually be in love after meeting him a few times? We were just like, that's what this show is. Right? 
it seemed did seem like a, like a switch flipped because when they first met at the airport, you know, she's running into his arms and they're all like, like they seem very, very genuine yes. and genuinely to, like in love with each other. And then now suddenly she's like cold, you know, Ukrainian woman, which a lot of people are suspecting is just the case is that that's just culturally. No, you don't really fall in love until later. It's just a, that's just how it is or something. Well, and I thought, and I thought maybe, I always say maybe the translation didn't come out because I, I felt like she was trying to describe why she couldn't say she was in love. And I don't think uh, it seemed like she didn't understand why he was offended. She's like, I'm being honest. And he's just like, oh, you don't love me. And I'm wondering if she's kind of like, I can't say it because I need to fill it again. I don't know. Anyways. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> well, we do know that she doesn't. She's not there for the tell-all. <laughs> so. Not there for the tell-all. So we're gonna assume maybe he actually did leave her there, and she's not here. Yeah. All right. So this next part is all you, <laughs> <laughs> which is what scares me because it's gonna sound like a run-on story. So <laughs> well, it um, kind of is. Well, Our favorite okay, so. couple that we love to hate. Tanya, Tanya and Sinjin. Sinjin. Oh my goodness. So not only did they deliver like the best car argument in 90 day history. <laughs> what do because we know every- about that scene? What do we know about that scene? So I mean, there's a couple, there's a couple um, stories on that. So I know on Reddit, the picture was originally posted. And I don't know by who, if it was a producer or somebody who was there, we're assuming leaked this photo. Um, of Tanya and she was, you know, sitting in the driver's seat and the producers were adjusting the GoPros and the wires and it, it just looks like hot hell in that car for that picture. Mm-hmm. And I think the New York Times article that came out was referring to the GoPros were actually um, not working right. Mm. And so what had happened was it kind of missed part of their argument. <laughs> <laughs> And the argument started, according to the article, because uh, one of the producers kind of stoked Sinjin to bring up a phone conversation, which was heated beforehand as well. So they kind of put that tension back into the, uh, to kind of instigate that fight, probably knowing that Tanya was going to. (laughs) Anyways, they're headed back from the airport, from her coming back from Costa Rica. And before we keep going with that, I think the the biggest question was, was Sinjin there before she went to Costa Rica or did he get there after she came back from Costa Rica? Right. We know on the show they make it, he arrives in the United States, she leaves for Costa Rica, leaving him alone for 30 days and then comes back. There was some things out there there that suggested their timeline might be a little bit frauded. So we started digging into this and digging deep into this. <laughs> Deeper than I wanted to go. <laughs> yeah. And we kind of uh, ended up hitting a dead end. But I'll, we'll, we're going to share with you what we did find and what we know is fraud and what isn't fraud. And, and we're going to go from there. So, Right. So we all know that Tanya's segment starts with her getting waxed. And so we found the waxing, uh, the wax company's Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it only takes a few scrolls to go down and see a post because they all do it about, yay, production is here. We're filming, blah, blah, blah. And the film, help me with this, the, you the, know, the clapboard thing. The, the clapboard <laughs> thing said <laughs> April 15th and then it said 90 day, right? Right. So we're assuming that that half that scene happened April fifteenth, mm-hmm. and that's in her preparation for her to get Sinjin. Now here's here's my my quick breakdown of this timeline. If he got there at least April, we'll say April nineteenth for the sake of planning a time, and she left about a month later to go to Costa Rica, and she comes back a month later from Costa Rica, and they do have thirty days to get married. The marriage license or marriage, Mm -hmm. yeah, marriage license that popped up in coordination with the person we figured out officiated their wedding on July Mm -hmm. 14th. 
So that means mm-hmm. if that if that timeline's true, that means they got married like the last freaking days of the ninety days. Yep. Now, now that's yep. not out of the <laughs> realm of possibility. And with Tanya right. and Sinjin, they're probably procrastinators, and I can believe that that happened. But that's cutting it. But really that would close. be like the very last day, yeah, of the ninety days, like the very last days of him <laughs> being there. And so that's when I kind of thought, well, maybe, you know, there's there's a whole lot of theories with it because just searching her Instagram history, you can see, okay, what was she doing on May 10th? God, you get embarrassed thinking about how far you would look at someone's timeline. Oh, God. But she okay, posted so- something about being in New York. I think she was walking and talking about Games of Thrones. Game of, the Game of Thrones. She was eating solo. So Sinjin wasn't even with her, allegedly. So we presume that that was the day. Yeah. That that was when she was flying out to go to Costa Rica because it was May 11th, May 10th time frame. Right. And so that that she both Mm -hmm. she and Sinjin have are flying in and out of Um, New York. Flying in and out of New York, which I'm assuming New York just. It happens to be probably the closest international. I don't know if Connecticut has international. That's what I'm guessing, but yeah. It, it's, it's believable right. that you drive a couple hours to hit, you know, that, that's common. Yeah, um, yeah. But I guess, that's yeah. Where the, I guess that's where the question pops up, right? Um, did they, did she go to Costa Rica and then come back and that's when Sinjin came? Because, I mean, that timeline, I guess, would feel more comfortable, Right. Visa wise, because like, it doesn't to have them getting get married, married the on the last, last day of the ninety days. But then, exactly, so and the, I think she's with the like waxing, an event planner, the almost project planner. Like, <laughs> well, and I mean, we know that. Well, I, I'm guessing, I know, I guess that they probably came out. You know, they'll do the thing where they film them at their job. They'll. Um, you know, film them doing some scenes because then they'll meet them in New York the next time. It's all speculation, but it's just, it's mm-hmm. just really interesting that, or worrisome that they would get married the last the week very possible. Last day. So yeah, <laughs> so this sent us down this rabbit hole. And one of the other things we learned, we think is the, the scene of Tanya and Sinjin driving back from the airport, picking up Sinjin. And the scene of Tanya and Sinjin driving back from the airport, picking up Tanya, we believe without, we don't have a solid proof on it, but we believe that was all filmed the same day, which is not an uncommon thing for them to do is to go back and do these refilming and, you know, film certain things or they didn't get something, you know, you see Tanya in the same pink shirt that she's wearing all the time. You see Sinjin in the green shirt <laughs> um, which could be just they have a limited I wardrobe. Think they both I mean, just really like those shirts. I think she just <laughs> bought 15 of those pink shirts, like, you know, the cartoon character closets. And that's literally like <laughs> all the shirts she has, which is probably really easy for production to do editing. Right. And they t- they tell them, you know, they like the, um, to be in the same <laughs> in the same outfits and stuff. So it could very well have been that, but then we had another source that say that it was like a 15 hour day filming Mm -hmm. when they had that fight in the car. So, and I can't remember where that, that source came from and where that information came from, but we have it. (laughs) It was, it was a reliable source that gave us that information that it was like a 15 hour day where, that uh, that argument ensued. Now, why would you have a 15-hour day filming if it's just them coming back for like a two-and-a-half-hour drive from the airport? How does right. a two-hour drive turn into a 15-hour drive? Unless you're trying to pretend that it's Sinjin arriving at the airport and then we do quick change and then it's Tanya arriving at the airport and we just film it all at the same time. We make one trip to LaGuardia and one you know, one set of permissions to film in the airport and just film both scenes there. But (laughs) we have the New York times article, right. With the clapboard Mm -hmm. thing, which was like, was that the airport scene that was April? The the New York, the, so the waxing was in April with the, the clap, 
<laughs> I'm going to call it a clapboard. <laughs> um, the New York Times article really documents their the drive back. And they, okay. they, they quote in here, you know, a two-hour drive turned into a five-hour drive. I think there was some technical difficulties. Um, but they also did mention that Tanya and Sinjin were pretty savvy to the, the filming game. You know, making sure that they got good cuts of everything and, you know, doing retakes if they needed to. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's just, yeah. it's one of those mysteries that, like I said, we don't have evidence that that's actually the truth. But there's just a lot of funny details that seem to not make sense so yeah i mean that was maybe, my juicy not so juicy <laughs> I know. what turned what turned into a not so juicy all not of our so juicy. well i mean that's how this works though right like we we had these tips we had this oh did they really get married on the very last day of the 90 days that's what tipped us off and then sent us down this this rabbit hole but then we were doing the research and reaching out to all the contacts and, and all of the things that we could do and deeper than like <laughs> deeper than Darcy's wine glass. And, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out that we couldn't find sufficient evidence to support our original hypothesis. And that sometimes happens with, you know, when you're looking at fraud, right? Is, is it fraud or is it not? So you know, sometimes this is what happens, and and it could be it could be very well the Occam's Razor. Are you familiar with Occam's Razor? I am not actually. Okay, so it's the theory that whatever the simplest explanation is, it's like a scientific theory. Whatever the simplest explanation is, is probably the right one. Like the more complicated <laughs> and the more what ifs you have to suppose this and then this and then this and it, the more of those you have to throw into a situation to make the story work the less likely that those are the actual truth so right. so this could be very well just a they just waited to the very last minute to get to get married <laughs> right and a lot I, I remember i saw um i forgot where the comment was where they were kind of talking about it too um, we do have only one time marker and it says she broke her leg. So, <laughs> you know, she had, nothing, yeah, she had surgery she had surgery or something happened. So it's kind of like, you know, that, that would be something obvious, but nothing she was, is... that, that was for the tell all. So it was around the Christmas time, late yeah. December that we know because she was in that boot and the crutches and everything, the wheelchair in all those pictures of them together after like when they went out after the tell all. God, that sucks. And there's a lot of Tanya and Sinjin sightings. Have you noticed that? Mm-hmm. Home Depot, Walmart, Market. Yeah. Like yep. no one else is having that many sightings. It's just <laughs> Tanya and Sinjin sightings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Like sorry, not that spectacular, but you know. That's that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have made a cookie reference. <laughs> the cookie jar. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking that. <laughs> oh my god, I'm going to lose uh, it. It's terrible uh, because of course my mom is a fan of the show too and she's just like I can't look at my cookie jar the same. <laughs> Of course, your mom can't because <laughs> she has to picture her former son-in-law. <laughs> Too funny. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Okay, so. That's all I have. <laughs> that's where we're at. That's the most exciting. Wah, wah, wah. Mm. Price is right. Loser music. <laughs> at least we can admit when we don't have what we thought we had. I think it's best, too, because I didn't mean I didn't want everyone to get hyped and go, oh, my God, there's something juicy. And it's like it's it's uh, it's like a question mark. Here's yeah. some puzzle pieces. Have fun with it. Originally. Yeah. Originally, there was we thought there was going to be more to it and we were not able to fill in those blanks. So that's the way it is. So the way the fraud breaks down sometimes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, some other other fun stuff happening this week is you and I launched our Patreon. Yes, we did. Woo! Never had a Patreon before. Me so neither. So this is all very new. We're creators. <laughs> Patreon calls us creators. Oh, is that what it is? Creators. Yeah. We're oh, creators. So, so empowering. <laughs> so for if you haven't heard yet, we're, we have started our Patreon. We... Um, 
what we're going to be doing is because this fraud thing isn't always lucrative in that regard. That's probably not the word I need. It doesn't always, it's not always fruitful. There's not always fraud, right? And so Mm -hmm. you don't want to go and make fraud, right? (laughs) You (laughs) you don't want to manufacture fraud. So in the meantime... (laughs) So what we're going to do is we are going to do recapping and reviews of other trashy reality TV shows, but we're going to take our characteristic, that has to be a planted conversation, that's totally producer driven, like that kind of cynical humor that we have, we're (laughs) taking that to Patreon and to these other trashy reality shows, and we're going to be reviewing and recapping those shows for you. And I believe we're dropping episodes on Thursdays. Yeah, I believe that's what we uh, planned on. Yeah. So we'll be dropping episodes on Thursdays. The shows we're going to be doing currently are Love After Lockup. By a large margin, you guys, we crowdsourced this and you guys wanted that. So we're going to do that. And to the extent we have fraud on it, we will absolutely, of course, share what we know on that. And so if you have tips on that, send them, send them our way. And then... We're going to do Married at First Sight, which if you guys haven't heard that, watch that show. It's fantastic. These people literally don't know each other. They're strangers and they get married and they don't even know each other's names until they're at the altar and they're matched by quote unquote experts. And there is some absolutely insane. It is. So there is some fraud on that, uh, on some of the casting process and the the, the things that I've been able to dig up. So we're going to cover both reviewing the show now, I have seen several seasons of this show, but Hanakawa has not. So she just started watching this train wreck for the very first time. <laughs> and my boyfriend, too. Like, we both watched the first episode of this current season, and we're both just like, what the f- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. How do life make well, nice to guys. watch the show together? <laughs> we, this would be a show we would watch together. And he, we oh actually call God. it Married at First Sight because the sound editing is so terrible about the way that they splice their sentence. When, they, when they're editing, they edit so horribly. Their sound edit oh, no. is so bad that the, the sound, instead of sounding like smooth, like married at first sight, it's married at first sight. Because it's so obviously spliced together. <laughs> so that's what we call it in our house. So, uh, yeah, we'll be doing that one. And again, with the fraud as well. There's a lot of it there, especially because their editing is so terrible. <laughs> we'll see if they um, graduated from the interns that they had doing it <laughs> and see if it's any better. But it was always so bad. You could see how badly spliced it was. Like, that's clearly not the same you know, like the the pillows are moving behind you. Like when, that's not this the is, same. This, that's a lifetime one, right? I mean, I don't yeah, know that's what on companies lifetime. are behind behind it, but yeah, lifetime is not as a uh, seasoned as TLC. I don't think in the reality area. And then we're gonna touch on some of TLC's hot and heavy, which I know has a, is a little bit controversial because of the sort of. Sensationalizing this idea that you have you're either hot or heavy, you can't be heavy and hot at the same time, and this this sort of concept of um, this fetishizing of these skinny men and these uh, you know is it so shocking that someone would love a fat person that you have to do a show about it? So we we recognize that there's controversy there. But we also recognize how producer driven and <laughs> how awful some of the scenes are with their <laughs> with their acting, quote unquote acting. <laughs> I, I know it's their first season, but it's already like, oh my god, it's kind of a train wreck. So we're gonna t- like we're doing touch it on for that. you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we're watching it, so you don't have to. <laughs> no. So that's going to be what we cover on the Patreon, and the um, the cost of the Patreon is actually really, really great. It's for you can get all of that, and you will also get access to a private Discord server with all of us and, and a hetero life mate, and um, we can all just chat and stuff, all for the low, low cost of three dollars a month. That's it. Only three dollars. You get all of those shows. It'll be one episode a week, plus access to the Discord server. We have a $5 level. If you want to get a one-time uh, set of stickers, I will send to you. 
We also have a one dollar level. If you just want to support the show, we'll give you a shout out. Anything and else for, about them? And, and for people who don't know what Discord is, because I I get asked oh, a lot, mm-hmm. what the hell yeah. is Discord? Um, it's it started out really as a a server. You could have your own server for like you know gaming. You could do streaming, voice chat, and stuff like that. But it's really grown to being more of a uh, area where you can have more secluded group doing chat and there's all kinds of other fun perks in it but you know as it grows the capabilities can grow um i probably am part of 25 discords oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like admin for five of them so um if it's anyone bas- has any questions you can always contact me yeah, i can help it's you basically i can walk a you through. private <laughs> like it's a private chat room essentially mm-hmm. You yeah, know, that's, that's and, how we'll be using it. And that, that's good enough. <laughs> for for those, like, I was first, inter- you know, yeah, my first introduction to Discord, I was like, what is this? And my and Baby Fraud was like, that's for gaming. Why are you using yeah. it? Because they all game in my house, but not me. And so it's like, it's just a chat room with my friends, <laughs> you know, and, and her life mate has his for his gaming. And you, I don't know. But it's essentially, we're using it as a private chat room at this point. So uh, you guys have will have access to that. And if you've already signed up for the Patreon and you don't have that invite, reach out to Hanakawa because she is in charge of those. And um, I am sending stickers out to the $5 level folks. And we're very excited about that because the first episode is going to drop Thursday of this yes. week. <laughs> so very exciting. Big things. Big things happening. <laughs> Um, and that's, that's, I think all we have going on this week. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very quiet week. I think most of the drama was in the show, but. Yeah. Well, what always happens and I'm hoping it, it'll happen with this one as well is right toward, as the show starts winding down, like the social media aspect stuff, like the cast gets crazy it's almost as if it's like the 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 show winding down is like the equivalent of a full moon and the cast goes batshit (laughs) and things happen and other stuff comes out and oh you know you never loved me you know all of this stuff things happen so you know if that happens then we'll be here to cover it for you (laughs) (laughs) cover all the crazy for you (laughs) it's like watching the dumpster to just wait until it catches fire (laughs) <laughs> that's kind of what we're doing <laughs> throwing matches into it waiting for it to oh, <laughs> poke, my poke, God. poke. <laughs> which one's gonna stick <laughs> oh my so, god yeah, no. i know we i know we don't have any shout outs in the bin um mm-hmm. but i i do want to personally shout out to everyone who has joined the patreon already yes um, it is so awesome to see you know that people actually want to join and be a part of it so thank you for joining and hopefully we get to make awesome content for you to enjoy all right so uh, we don't have any like you said we don't have any shout outs from the from the dump this week uh if you do have any tips for us any um anything of interest for any of those shows that we're going to be recapping for the patreon if you have any questions or anything for us you guys can go to the talkers of fraud.com in that box on the page Fill that out, sends us an email, and if you have any tips on fraud or anything like that or any of these shows that we're going to be covering, we would absolutely love that. Uh, I am Katrina. I am Frauded by TLC. That's where you can find me on social media. You can find our uh, Facebook group is The Fraudcasters on Facebook. And you can find me uh, on Instagram, cactus underscore fruit underscore juice. So we recognize that your time listening to podcasts is limited. And we do thank you for choosing to use your time to listen to us. We appreciate you being here and we look forward to hearing from you. I'm frauded by TLC and I'm dumpster diving so you don't have to. You can find your fraudcaster on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Frauded by TLC and on the web at talkersoffraud.com. This fraudcast has been produced and edited by yours truly, art by Sarah Dawdy, music written, produced, and performed by Umami, segment producer at iHeartReality TV shows, further assistance provided by many unnamed fraud consultants.